Where is music? No, no, no. Wait a minute. What is sound? Sound is an acoustic wave that vibrates in the gas, liquid, and solid matters. A sound can have a tone and a pitch that is being measured in hertz and kilohertz, which is 1000 hertz. A human ear can perceive from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Everything that is below that range is called infrasound, and everything above is the ultrasound. What is music and how different is it from noise? Music is the combination of harmonizing sounds that have rhythm, tone, theme, and concept. Noise is pure chaos and consists of random sounds and tones that don't match. This is why music is satisfying and noise is irritating to the human ear. Can there be such situations when the line between music and noise is erased? Music and people walked hand in hand since the beginning of history. In music, the amount of artists and genres is as countless as the amounts of ways to create it and the goals that it was made for. Music is diverse. Funny, cute, depressive, sad, aggressive, melancholic, nostalgic, etc. If you ask people what is music for them, they'll describe it as something entertaining, calming, and maybe even therapeutic. This perception of music is common and well understood because all people enjoy music. Nevertheless, not everyone knows that music can be torturous. Music resonates with people. It can inspire and provoke, influence the mood, lifestyle, worldview, and even physical state. It can either heal or hurt. It happened in history when it caused such psychological and physical traumas that it was impossible to recover from. We often associate music with emotions and memories from our lives. What if someone turned the music against you to make you suffer? What if it was music that you once enjoyed? Music inspires, comforts and elevates. At the same time, it can ruin lives and steal the sense of identity and self-respect. Music can give freedom and impose control. How? That's an interesting question. Why and how? These questions come first when you hear about torturing with music. Usually, the music torture is practiced in prisons during warfare to oppress, scare, demoralize, and destabilize. Torturing with music is something way different than anything else. A torturer has no need to physically touch his victim. This is why the music torture belongs to the category of psychological warfare. It dives deep into a person's sense of self, strips him out of all hope, and dehumanizes him. It can cause the nerve damage, headaches, depressive mindset, disruption of biological rhythms, cardiovascular and hormonal diseases, the middle ear fatigue, and hearing loss. At the same time, it doesn't leave any external traces on the body. Even though music makes life easier, we lose who are tortured with music with disagree.
existed during their prison routine and interrogations. They can be tied and forced to wear headphones or be closely exposed to dynamics. Usually it takes from 2 to 5 days to drive someone insane. Two of the most popular ways of the music torture is either loudness or repetitiveness. Both methods can make a prisoner exhausted, irritated and insane. For instance, if the guards decide that the prisoners won't sleep tonight, the music will be so loud that there won't be a single quiet corner to escape. Music can harm its victims not only by its loudness or repetitiveness, but also by the content. Some prisoners might feel the culture shock when they hear something that contradicts their beliefs and moral values. The methods are limited only by torture's imagination. Although in many cases the music torture is done with the technologies, sometimes the live orchestra is involved as well. After an extremely hard work, people can be forced to learn music, play instruments and sing. If the guards are not satisfied with the performance, it will be done all over again. Playing with no enthusiasm and bursting in tears is strictly forbidden. Such kind of music performances are done not only to abuse the prisoners, but also to create an illusion that the time in captivity is not so horrible. In a way, it reduces empathy and provides the sense of escapism for both the inmates and the guards. In some cases, though, loud music prevents the sounds of atrocities from being heard. since the ancient times when they realized its powerful impact. Music was often used on the battlefield to scare the enemies. In the Middle Ages, the drums were played for prisoners who were sentenced to the execution to demoralize them. There was also a torture device that was called the Flute of Shame. The Flute of Shame looked like a metal pipe with holes and a ring. The ring was put on the prisoner's neck, and into the holes of the pipe a prisoner must put his own fingers. Then those holes were closed to break the fingers of bad musicians. Now, let's move much, much further when the music torture was practiced on the bigger scale. I mean the times of the Second World War. One of the most curious cases was the period of the Spanish Civil War. Back then there was an architect whose name was Alfonso Laurentich. He used the abstract art to design a unique prison cell that was made to manipulate a detainee's mind and turn his incarceration into hell. Inside those cells, the bricks were cemented into the floor in the zigzag shapes to make walking uncomfortable. The bed was made of concrete and placed under the 45 degree angle, so the prisoner couldn't sleep without sliding off. There were psychedelic shapes and patterns on the walls, also a clock that went faster than usual. It was made to ruin the sense of time. In addition, a metronome was ticking non-stop to drive a poor bastard completely crazy. At the same time, in Germany, Nazis took over the country and its music. Controlling the music was important to them because they knew its powerful influence. It was strictly censored and used for both 
propaganda and torture. It is beyond question that music possesses the greatest power to form the emotions and feelings that move our spirit, though it seems least suited to satisfying the intellect. Adolf Hitler, 1938 the Reich Minister of Propaganda, Josef Goebbels, personally curated which music was accepted and which was rejected. The one that was preserved was of the German origin only. Under Goebbels' supervision, the museums of the degenerate art were built as a mockery of the artists who were unpleasant to the regime. There were two kinds of museums, the ones with paintings and the ones with music. By the degenerate art was meant the modernist abstract art that distorted reality and thus corrupted the German spirit. In the Third Reich, the music that possessed any dissonances or atonalities was illegal because it automatically was considered poison spread by Jews and communists. The music was nationalized and only the traditional classical composers were allowed, such as Wagner, Strauss, Beethoven and Mozart. After that, many German musicians fled to avoid the persecution. Meanwhile, all Jewish musicians were dismissed from their jobs in orchestras. The vast majority of those people couldn't escape because immigration was too expensive and they were so attached to the German society that they had uh, nowhere else to go. Some of those who stayed started co-working with Nazis due to the lack of choice. Others were sent to the concentration camps. When I started building the first concentration camps, music took special place there. It was rare when a camp didn't have its own orchestra. The biggest ones, such as Dachau, Auschwitz, Buchenwald and Sachsenhausen had a few orchestras. Many of the German camp guards had good music education and they knew what an effective torture the music was. This is why they wanted to have their own orchestras.
Это грустно.
What happened to those in the concentration camps who could sing or play an instrument? Close your eyes. Imagine this. You're an average guy who lives his life in the Eastern Europe in the 1940s. Everything is fine until you're captured by the Nazis who decide to send you to one of the local camps. Later, you find out that your camp is called Yanovska, that is located on the outskirts of Lvov in Ukraine. When you enter the camp, you feel terrified because you don't know what will happen to you. One of the weird things you notice on the arrival is the orchestra playing at the entrance. Even though the performers play cheerful music, there is no happiness on their faces. One of them suddenly began crying and that's why it was taken away by the guards. It's obvious that the orchestra plays music to give the false sense of comfort, to make you think that your captivity is not as horrible as it might seem. Nevertheless, it's a total pile of shit and you know it. Now you are standing in line with everyone else. The German SS officers start divide people by two groups. Healthy men and women who can work are in the first one. Old people and children are in the second. Your group is sent to the place where all your valuables will be taken. Your head shaved and a striped uniform will be given to you. Besides that, your number will be tattooed on your arm. Before your first days in the camp, you've never felt so exhausted and desperate. You feel like a piece of dead meat after working in the mines carrying stones, cleaning, and all other kinds of physical labor. Days are going by. Your work day and night with little of food, water, and sleep. If you disobey, you'll be either shot or sent to the gas chamber. One of the worst things in the camp is music. You loved music when you were free, but now it resembles of sounds from hell. You always hear it everywhere and cannot escape it. Every morning, day and night, they force you to sing. Sometimes it's your native songs that you can choose, but often they force you to sing the German songs. New songs sound uplifting and patriotic, but only to Germans. To you, they sound like complete humiliation, especially in the nighttime after the hard labor. They force you to sing the same songs over and over and over again until the guards are satisfied. They are never satisfied. That's the entire point. That music is torturous, especially when you don't know any German songs. If you don't know any, the guards will teach you through the severe punishment. In the next morning, you stand in line outside with your fellow prisoners. One of the officers asks if anyone can play instruments. You say you can. You worked as a conductor when you were free. This is when your life in the camp changes entirely. From now on, you are not an overage prisoner. You're in the camp orchestra. You live 
in better conditions and have more food. Many other prisoners who were not as lucky as you feel jealous and treat you with bias. Your imprisonment became a little easier, but not the way you feel. You feel like a traitor from playing for the enemy. In the 1945th, your camp will be liberated soon by the Allied forces, but you are not meant to see that. One day, the guards gather your orchestra outside in the circle. They put you in the middle. As the orchestra plays, one by one, every musician gets bullet in his head, and the music goes more, more silent with each death. Now you, the conductor, are the only one alive, but not for long. After the liberation, many musicians from other camps went home. Most couldn't take the instruments in their hands ever again. Unfortunately, your luck has expired in the eternal tango of death. What I told you has actually happened. It was in the Yanovska concentration camp. When musicians stood and played in the circle and were shot one by one, it was called Tango of Death. It was organized by the SS officer Richard Rakita, who was a violinist and had exceptionally sadistic inclinations. When the tango was performed, someone took a picture of it and then was severely punished. Despite the attempts to keep it secret, the photo was preserved and was shown on the Nuremberg process as the evidence of violence in the camps. In the end of the World War II and the beginning of the Cold War, the music torture was still practiced despite being illegal. One of the first and biggest cases was during the Korean War. For the North Koreans and Chinese, music has proven itself greatly during interrogations of the captured South Korean and US soldiers. The usage of sound in the psychological warfare is important to mention because during the World War II and later the Vietnam War, the Soviet and the US soldiers found creative ways of using sound design to scare and demoralize the enemy. In the World War II, the Soviet soldiers played the audio message on the battlefield for the Germans. The message was Every minute 
one German dies. Germans return home. Soviets also hijacked the German radio waves and transmitted the same message for the German citizens. The US soldiers used the sound design on the battlefield to distract the enemy. For example, they could play the sounds of approaching tanks when actually there was none. Similar tactic was adopted by the US soldiers in the Vietnam War, who took advantage of the superstitious Vietnamese. The Vietnamese believed in spirits, so Americans used the sounds of screams and noises to create panic. They placed loudspeakers on the helicopters and soldiers' backs to play those sounds in the jungle. Another notable case of the music torture was in 1985 in the Turkish prisons where detainees were beaten up, forced to sit on all fours and sing. Now let's return a few decades back to the point where people started considering the wrongfulness of torture. After the World War II, Nazis were judged for the war crimes on the Nuremberg trial. In the June 26 of 1945, to maintain peace and to prevent another world war from happening, the former allies 
founded the United Nations. On December 10th of 1948, United Nations adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, where any kind of physical or mental abuse was outlawed. The music torture is still alive, and with the technological development, it took on more despicable forms. During my research, I found the information about the practice of music as a torture in different countries, including my home country, Russia. In one of the most infamous Russian prisons, Vladimir Central Prison, the inmates were tortured with music. They were very upset when the guards constantly kept the music on. Mostly it was Russian pop music, Soviet cartoon soundtracks, and field recordings of noise and screams. In 2018, one of Vladimir's prisoners, Alexander Filipov, sued the administration for installing loudspeakers into his prison cell that worked even in the night time. According to him, the prisoners are tortured like that to prevent them from thinking, communicating, and preparing for the court. One of the detainees of the Varnavina prison, Yuri Shorchev, told that he was interrogated with the constant beatings and music. He stood naked at the corridor. The guards made him stand against the wall with his limbs stretched and turned the Rammstein songs through the dynamic over his head. According to him, the sound was so loud that it could physically hurt and drive anyone crazy. He wanted to scream, and his ears bled. There were different cases of the music torture in many other Russian prisons. It was done to break prisoners' spirit and to stop them from complaining about the administration. The music was so loud that it could be heard from beyond the walls. This is how the music torture being practiced on the East. Now let's move to the West and talk about the period that made the music torture the subject of many discussions. I mean the Iraq war that began in 2003. In the period of war on terror, USA had free jails where they kept anyone who was suspected for terrorism. Those jails were Guantanamo, Abu Ghraib, and Bagram. They became worldwide infamous for the horrible treatment of inmates. Some of the tortures there were waterboarding, beatings, standing in the uncomfortable positions for long time, electrocution, and music. was mentioned by all prisoners in the interviews. It is either the individual or the group torture. The amount of victims doesn't matter. The process is always similar. They tie a prisoner's hands, put the hood and headphones on his head, and turn the music on. Sometimes they don't pick a specific person and do it while everyone is in their prison cells. Often they use music to accompany other kinds of tortures. Sometimes it lasts hours, sometimes days. 
After a long listening of an extremely loud music, the feeling of isolation becomes inevitable. Prisoners can't even hear their own thoughts. They're in a nearly vegetative state that makes them obedient and hopeless. When music is unknown to prisoners and contradicts their moral values, it provokes the cultural shock and disgust. What kind of music was used and how did the musicians react to it? Usually it's metal, pop, rap and electronic music. Here's the list of those artists whose songs were used. Metallica, Deicide, Drowning Pool, Rage Against the Machine, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Nine Inch Nails, ACDC, Marilyn Manson, Britney Spears, Eminem and Skinny Puppy. Some musicians found it immoral and demanded not to play their music. For instance, Skinny Puppy sent an invoice to the Pentagon, sued one of the prisons and demanded the monetary compensation. Some musicians took it cynically and weren't mind that their music was used that way. Metallica and Deicide didn't understand how someone can be tortured with music and laughed it off in the interviews. Other artists, such as Britney Spears, decided not to comment the situation. The composer of the children TV show Sesame Street, Christopher Serf, was seriously stunned when he found out that his music was played in Guantanamo and Abu Ghraib. Eventually, he decided to make the documentary Songs of War, Music as a Torture Weapon. There, he tried to learn about the ways of the music torture. It's an amazing documentary and I recommend you to watch it. The cases of tortures in the American prisons became the huge subject of discussions. The photos of prisoners being terrorized leaked on the surface and those guards who abused their power went to the court. Nevertheless, the military took advantage of the music torture. They weaponized sound to create the special cannons that could transmit noise on the long distances. It is used in the warfare and to neutralize riots. The sound weapon can cause panic, hearing loss and even heart attack. Even though the music torture is now recognized as unethical, its nihilistic history did not end. Our mortals. In the beginning, I planned this project to be another short video for my YouTube channel, but while doing the research, I realized that there is so much to tell about it that I decided to turn it into the full-scale documentary film. Working on it was intense and worth it. As a musician, I can tell that creating this film 
has definitely expanded my view of music. I'm really happy for making this film and I hope it left you happy as well. Thanks for watching, farewell, stay out of hell.